right, so we just got a chance to see Exploit uh, Zero Day, and it looks pretty cool. And we're happy to be joined by Gregory Avery Weir from the co-founder of Future Proof Games. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, so it's really cool because a lot of people, uh, especially nowadays, get caught up on the idea that puzzle games, you know, usually are associated with phones. And, you know, what's really cool is that, you know, this game has a lot more to it. It has a story behind it. You know, it has that hacking expect, uh, aspect, the social aspect. Can you give us a little uh, background on, on the story aspect of this game? Sure. Uh, well, the game is uh, a sequel of sorts. Um to a, a Flash game that I did uh, a while back that uh, also was pretty story focused. And the general idea behind it is that it is this, this cyberpunk hacking game, but it's present day cyberpunk. Um, so we're, we try really hard to make all the technology in the game be something that's realistic in the current day. Maybe you'd need to be a really good programmer to implement it, but, uh, but it's all something that could actually happen today. And um, the story is going to be sort of a mixture of ongoing live plotline um, in a similar way to some alternate reality games, ARGs do it, um, where we will, be, we will be having non-player characters that you can interact with, you can have conversations with on the forums, and uh, that participate into an ongoing plot. And then there's going to be sort of more traditional story that links the puzzles together that's kind of like you can play through a season of content and everyone pretty much gets the same content, although there will be story choices in there. And in the fiction of the game, each puzzle that you're solving is a computer system that you're hacking into. Um, so you might be uh, hacking into a, a firewall for a police station in order to get into their um, into their servers in order to get the encryption code for a video that's being hidden by a corrupt cop that's been killing people um, or you might uh, you might have to get into um, some some computers that are being used by terrorists to conceal their activities or something like that and this is all tied together with a frame story that's being given to you as jobs by characters that you can actually a ask questions of just with natural language because you're actually having conversations with people, real people who are running those characters. Oh, so that's cool. So, so like you said, this was uh, a sequel to Exploit, which mm -hmm. you, got, uh, you released in 2009, right? That sounds right, yeah. Okay, cool. So, so as far as you know the inspiration as far as um you know just creating this kind of story driven was there like um games in the past that kind of gave you that inspiration to create you know that kind of a story because i think that's really cool um you know like i think that a lot of people got introduced to having that kind of storytelling mixed with a puzzle mixed in from like tv shows like i know a lot of people who came to games like that um, even like with Lost, I remember they had like a game like that where you would play, you would watch a TV show that had like a storyline and you play that and people were like, oh man, these games are cool. I'm like, man, do you realize that computer games have been doing that for years? You know, you had these really involved stories mixed in uh, with puzzles like, you know, Myst or something like that. Yeah, I mean, I'm a def definitely a huge fan of Myst and various adventure games that have sort of different kinds of puzzles as part of the of the story. Um, and I like the the creativity and the game design of um, of games that explore one puzzle really one puzzle type really deeply. Um, and I there are some that do that. World of Goo was probably a big inspiration for me when I was first making Exploit because it's it's a game that that provides the most bizarre story and world with very strange puzzles, and it makes it all hook together very well. Um, and there, there certainly been been similar um, similar games in the meantime. And I always find that I really stick with a a game more if it's got something that's linking together its challenges instead of it just being, hey, here's a puzzle. Now here's another puzzle. Um, and, and we're definitely drawing inspiration for how we're structuring our storylines and how we're structuring our mysteries from things like Lost and, uh, and a lot of the, the alternate reality games that, that have been used as promotions for more traditional games. Now, as far as just games in, in general, like uh, what, was your, what did you start playing you know, back in the days? 
Oh boy. Uh, I have been playing video games, I think, longer than I can remember. Um, <laughs> but my earliest games would have been uh, some very early text adventures. Uh, my my dad uh, had an old Atari 800, which um, nice. I am actually not old enough to have used an Atari 800, except that my dad happened to have an old one that I that I played with. Um, and uh, and so the old Infocom games, Zork, um, the uh, uh, a lot of the old DOS games. Um, I've been a big PC focused gamer for a long time. I didn't really get into consoles until until adulthood, um, when it was you know at the point of oh okay there are some games that I really want to play. Consoles are the way to do it, so I'd borrow a friend's or, or eventually ended up with my own. Um, but PC has been my focus. So yeah, definitely from an early age, graphical adventure games um, hit, were a big focus for me. Role playing games. Um, I. I'm a big fan of story-focused games and uh, games that provide you with, that leave you feeling something, that leave you with something you think about after you finish playing them. And the game is going to be entering the open alpha stage where players will be able to get access to it, correct? Yeah, yep. Uh, we don't really quite have a timeline for that. Uh, we're hoping sometime soon. Um, right now, if someone wants to play the game, uh, they can sign up to our mailing list, and we are sending out periodic, uh, every month or two, uh, emails where we're letting a bunch of people in. Um, so if you're interested in the game and you want to check it out, we would love to have you. Um, we're just kind of managing the rate at which new people are showing up right now. Okay, and you can go over to uh, exploitzeroday.com to check that out as well, right? That's right. Yep. All right, awesome. Well, if you guys, you already checked out the trailer. The game is Exploit Zero Day, and I hope you guys will check out. We'll put the links on the website and also on the YouTube so you guys can check it out. But, uh, Gregory, thanks for coming on and talking to us about the game. Thank you very much for having me. All right, well, this is Beyond the Game Trailer, brought to you by Obsolete Gamer. I'm Jayla Rock, and we'll be back soon with another trailer and another interview following up with that. But we, until next time, remember our motto, never stop gaming. Thanks for watching.